नेक्स्ट गवर्नर जनरल इज लॉर्ड लैंस डाउन ओके 1888 to 1894. Lansdowne Lansdowne is a city in Uttarakhand. Like uh, when we have discussed about Dalhousie, I told you Dalhousie in itself was a city which was in Himachal Pradesh. So similarly, Lansdowne is a city in Uttarakhand. Now, the important point which I need to discuss under Lansdowne is in 1892 Indian Council Act. Okay, so basically there was a Indian Council Act in 1861 or so, right? so three indian council act is there 1861 1892 and 1909 now in these acts if you see the number of members in the legislative assemblies was steadily increased or slowly increased from 1861 to 1892 and to 1909 right so the number of members in the legislative assemblies is increased so it was like uh, 1861 then more in 1892 then more in 1909 so what i'll do is i will cover all these acts three acts together out of this 1909 is very very important for us so basically you can see there are certain reforms in the process of elections okay so there are certain reforms in the process of election we will be discussing all those things when we discuss about these three acts that this uh, three acts indian council acts i'll discuss separately in the next session Now, if you ask me in one word, what is the importance of uh, 1909 Indian Council Act? 1909 is basically some Indians are going to be elected as well as nominated in the assemblies, both at the centre and at the state level. Okay, so 1909 we will be discussing more in detail because that is more important for us. Then we have something called as uh, something coming in 1919 and 1935. Okay. so this also we will cover in the coming sessions but what i'll do is i'll discuss these three separately together so this three together and these two also will cover simultaneously so lands down period is important for this 1892 indian council act so that we will discuss otherwise there is nothing important from the exam point of view so i am skipping this person let's move on to the next governor general that is lord elgin lord elgin 2 in 1894 to 90 8 now only one important event that i need to discuss is actually in 1897 the chapaker brothers of pune everybody know this there's a very famous incident okay and very important question for prelims also so chapaker brothers chapaker brothers of pune killed an english official rans okay so chapaker brothers of pune killed an english official rans so very important event why it is important is because This is the first political murder of a British official during freedom struggle. Now, after this, you can see a lot of attacks against the English officials by the revolutionaries. So, this uh, extremist revolutionaries will also be discussed in the coming sessions. Okay, so I'll also discuss about the difference between extremist and revolutionaries in detail. But uh, the point is, this is this this murder is uh, important because there is a first political murder which happened like against the British official during the freedom struggle. The first one. After this, you can see a series of attack against the British officials by the revolutionaries. But the point is, this is the first one. Now, who was Rance? Rance was a plague commissioner. Okay, so he was a plague commissioner uh, killed by Chapaker brothers. Now, who are the brothers? Balakrishna and Damodar. Right. Balakrishna and Damodar. See, if you get a question and answer in this format, then also you must be in a position to pick it. Okay, if uh, it can be, uh, it can be given in names like Balakrishna and Damodar, not necessarily Chapaker brothers. Okay, so murder of Rans. Now, what is uh, this Chapaker? Chapaker is actually a particular Brahmin caste in Maharashtra. Okay, so Brahmin caste in Maharashtra. So that's about uh, Lord Elgin. So. if you observe in our video sessions all the governor generals that i have covered i mostly cover two or three governor generals at a time in that one will be very important right so here i have covered two so far that is uh, lord lansdown and lord elgin not that important lansdown is important only for 1892 council act so there is nothing much to discuss about lansdown we have to discuss 1892 indian council act separately so there is nothing much we have discussed under him and when it comes to elgin the chapaker brothers killed rans that one particular incident so apart from that there is nothing but the governor general that we are going to discuss next that is lord curson is the most important governor general in this session okay so my discussion will be confined to more about lord curson in this video session
so 1899 to 1905 lord curzon see uh, one important point has period uh, in history is known as the period of omissions and commissions period of omissions and commissions see he appointed lots of commissions and that's why uh, period of commissions and if you see in 1902 rely commission rely commission was appointed to look after education in this period okay so if you remember when we discussed about lord warren hasting the first governor general of bengal i told you his period in history is known as trial and error period and uh, i have given you a question warren hasting's period in history is known as trial and error period discuss comment or critically analyze or whatever it is right and i have given you the solution or the way you need to answer also so same question in the same format you can expect when it comes to lord curzon also lord curzon's period in history is known as period of omissions and commission discuss comment critically analyze whatever it is and the answer is going to come here okay so be very attentive to the session so this can be a mains question and you'll get some points from in the prelims also so the first commission that i need to discuss is basically about 1902 rely commission which is appointed for the purpose of education now before i discuss about rely commission and education when we discuss about education two three points which i need to quickly recap is basically see the reforms in education has started in 1813 when we discussed about charter act under lord minto the first charter act charter act one right the second important point was related to education so obviously the first point was related to end of monopoly that we have discussed end of monopoly except in two items that are trade in tea product and trade with china after that i have discussed about the impacts of all those things that led to deindustrialization and that led to complete deindustrialization in india that is the first point that i have discussed after that the second point in the charter act of 1813 was related to education what was that the company was asked to spend rupees 1 lakh for the purpose of betterment of education in those areas where they have control in right so the company was directed to spend for betterment of education so the first effort for the development of education or reform in education happened in 1813 then you can see various efforts in improving the education right you have seen something in 1835 that we called as or understood as maculum in it so what was maculum in it they have given importance to higher education that is one point right so they have given importance to higher education so higher education will be taken care but not for everyone the minority of indians are going to get education right in english model and in english medium we have discussed this in detail and we have discussed about the problem also right so not all the indians are going to get education like hardly one percentage or the minority of indians are going to get education in english model and in english medium and the assumption was that this one percentage who's getting the education in english model and in english medium will teach the other indians in vernacular language but this assumption was never came true or it was never practical right those indians who got education they never taught the rest of the indians so this is what we call as trickle down theory or downward filtration theory maculaminant is also called as trickle down theory or downward filtration theory but that was again a failure okay now after that we have seen in 1837 something right till then persian was the official language in 1837 persian was replaced with english as the official language and that created a lot of problem among the muslims because now muslims are going to lose all the key positions that they were holding till 1837 now the moment english became the official language muslims are not good at english so they are going to lose the post that they were held after this we have seen the most important among all that is Wood's Dispatch in 1854, right? Wood's Dispatch in 1854 and we call it as Magna Carta of Modern Indian Education. The reason is the responsibility of giving education to masses is now with the government. The government took up the responsibility of giving education to masses and that's why it is called as Magna Carta of Modern Indian Education and there are around 5-6 uh, points that we have discussed under that so you can have a quick recap go back to the previous video session and see in detail right and after that we have seen in 1882 Hundar Commission right so Hundar Commission now when you discuss about 1835, 1854 and 1882 the points the most important point in 1835 they have given importance to higher education when it comes to Woods Dispatch, they have given importance to secondary education. And the problem of giving education to pri primary sector, that is the at the primary level, uh, solved in Hundar Commission, they are giving importance to primary education. So instead of coming 
instead of going from bottom to top they are coming from top to bottom right so from here onwards most of the problem with education are solved now let's move on to discuss about relay commission okay which was appointed by lord cawson for the purpose of reforms in education in his period now on the basis of this a uh, university act was passed okay in 1904 Indian Universities Act was passed. Indian Universities Act was passed in 1904. Now it was very controversial as its purpose was basically to control the universities in India. Now why you want to control universities in India? See universities are predominantly when you talk about universities after uh, Hunter Commission report more and more universities to be started right and we have seen establishment of more universities after Hunter Commission report but predominantly if you see the three important universities were in bengal bombay and madras three presidencies right three presidency cities or three presidency towns and most of the anti nationalist activities were happening here that is the british version right so in their point of view the universities became a anti national hub so they want to control universities so we have seen already in 1857 three universities were established in three presidencies right bengal bombay and madras and this created a middle educated class so if you look uh, this point from 1835 we have seen macula minute and coupled with 1857 establishment of universities that created a middle class who are more educated and who are more politically aware so they started demanding certain rights from the english so when they look at uh, english citizen the same british rulers there and the english citizen is having more rights and the same people are governing india also but the citizens here are not having the rights which was offered in england and more than that the they start they are exploiting the indians okay the britishers are exploiting the indians so they started demanding more and more rights and they called it as un british rule in india it is not the british who are ruling in india the reason is the same british are ruling in uh, england where the citizens are getting all the rights and liberties but when it comes to india there are no rights given to its citizens so they call it as un british rule in india so government understood by this time that this universities are going to be a anti british hub or a hub for nationalist movement okay so this universities are going to be the hub for nationalist activities or anti anti british more anti british activities and they call it as anti national and the government tried to control the universities in india through bodies like senate okay so they try to control through senate and more nominated members will occupy the important positions in universities and senate which is going to take important decisions and which was obviously resisted by the indians and the indian middle class and the indian nationalists so it is crystal clear that cousins policy was basically to promote research and education rather than you politically motivated so it is basically to focus on projects and education and your research rather than you are getting politically influenced okay so and since then this debate is going on whether the universities uh, should be focused on only education or there should be some element of politics or uh, such kind of other activities okay and there are always a division on one side people will say that you can allow election or political uh, situations in universities but on the other side people say that universities are only for research and education purpose so even though you are saying that cousins objective was basically to promote research education or development of projects etc and not to make the students or the the researchers politically motivated basically the ultimate objective is basically to establish a government control over universities and which is obviously resisted by the nationalist at any point of time see something against nationalist like uh, see when we have discussed about uh, 1877 right three controversial acts you can compare okay see three controversial acts that we have discussed in 1877 one was arms act right second was vernacular press act right third one was lowering the age of civil services right now all the three were very strongly opposed by the nationalist the reason is it was affecting the nationalist okay see if you see arms act what was arms act the license to possess arms became little more tough 
for the Indians and which was liberalized for the English. So they felt it as discriminatory and they, they opposed against it, right? So they obviously opposed and it, it is actually affecting the middle class only. The poor man, there is no, uh, no way it is going to affect, right? So they were actually working for their own reason. Now, if you see, when elections were introduced in India for the first time, when the local government started, I told you already in Ripon's time, the elections was there. It was not based on universal adult suffrage, but it was based on limited suffrage. Those who are educated, they will they will be able to vote. And those who are paying tax, they will be able to vote, not the common man, right? And very, very, very minority is going to contest election. Hardly 2.2 percentage is going to vote. And within that, 0.5 or something is going to contest election. So this was not opposed by the nationalists because even the nationalist point of view also, if the educated people, if the uneducated people are going to vote, what is the, uh, to whom they are going to vote and uh, on the basis of what idea they will vote, etc. This is what they thought. Now if you look for Vernacular Press Act also, this is also going to affect the nationalist. Lowering the age of civil service, they opposed because this is again going to affect them. Similarly, universities, when this act was passed, this is also going to affect the middle class. So they strongly opposed this, right? Now, uh, th these are not important points. Basically, I just want to discuss about Indian Universities Act was passed and his period in history is known as uh, Commission and Omission. Then we have discussed about Lord Lansdowne and Lord Elgin and we have just, we just started with Lord Curzon and the discussion on Curzon will be complete when we discuss about partition of Bengal. So in this session, I will not get enough time to discuss about partition of Bengal and that in itself, I will have to start a new topic like freedom struggle. So here onwards, I'm going to start the topic freedom struggle and 1905 onwards, that is partition of Bengal onwards, we are going to start freedom struggle and we are going to discuss everything here onwards, right? So if you see history, when you say modern history, we can say from 1757 to 1947 okay so when you say indian national movement okay you can say from 1885 to 1947 because the congress was started or established in 1885 now when you say freedom struggle you can either there is a confusion it is either from 1857 some people will say from 1857 to 1947 it is freedom struggle because the first struggle happened here and some people say 1905 to 1947 now whatever it is i am going to consider we anyway we have discussed this 1857 as a separate topic so here onwards i am going to consider this as freedom struggle and we are going to start freedom struggle from 1905 partition of bengal onwards so next session i will be discussing about partition of bengal in detail and we will cover entire topics in history in the coming sessions okay now in between uh, 1861 council act 1892 and 1909 i'll have to cover separately that also i will cover the 1919 act and government of india act 1935 will also be covered separately otherwise all the points will cover in the coming sessions hardly five six sessions i'll take i'll cover the complete history